Good evening and welcome back to the New York Immigration Coalition Test, Trace, and Take Care video series. My name is Lovely Tejada, the Manager of Community Engagement at the New York Immigration Coalition, and I will be your host. The NYC has put together a series of videos to share information and resources about the New York City Health and Hospitals Test, Trace, and Take Care campaign and answer your questions. Next, we will deliver a presentation on the benefits of following precautionary measures, including physical distancing practices, mask wearing adherence, and relevant guidance on safe reopening practices, followed by live questions from the audience. What is physical distancing? Social distancing, also called physical distancing, means keeping a safe space between yourself and other people who are not from your household. To practice social or physical distancing, stay at least six feet, about two arms length from other people who are not from your household in both indoor and outdoor spaces. Physical distancing should be practiced in combination with other everyday preventative actions to reduce the spread of COVID-19, including wearing masks, avoiding touching your face with unwashed hands, and frequently washing your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Why practice physical distancing? COVID-19 spreads mainly among people who are in close contact within six, about six feet for a prolonged period. Spread happens when an infected person coughs, sneezes, or talks, and droplets from their mouth or nose are launched into the air and land in the mouth or nose of people nearby. The droplets can also be inhaled into the lungs. Recent studies indicate that people who are infected but do not have symptoms likely also play a role in the spread of COVID-19. Since people can spread the virus before they know they are sick, it's important to stay at least six feet away from others when possible, even if you or they do not have any symptoms. Physical distancing is especially important for people who are at higher risk for severe illness from COVID-19. Although the risk of severe, il severe illness may be different for everyone, anyone can get and spread COVID-19. Everyone has a role to play in slowing the spread and protecting themselves, their family, and their community. In addition to practicing everyday steps to prevent COVID-19, keeping space between you and others is one of the best tools we have to avoid being exposed to this virus and slowing its spread in communities. Tips for physical distancing. When going out in public, it's important to stay at least six feet away from other people and wear a mask to slow the spread of COVID-19. Consider the following tips for practicing physical distancing when you decide to go out. Consider physical distancing options to travel safely when running errands or commuting to and from work, whether walking, bicycling, wheelchair rolling, or using public transit, rideshares, or taxis. When using public transit, try to keep at least six feet from other passengers or transit operators. For example, when you're waiting at a bus station or selecting seats on a bus or train. When using rideshares or taxis, avoid pooled rides where multiple passengers are picked up and sit in the back seat in larger vehicles so you can remain at least six feet away from the driver. Only visit stores selling household essentials in person when you absolutely need to, and stay at least six feet away from others who are not from your household while shopping and in lines. If possible, use drive through curbside pickup, or delivery services to limit face-to-face -face contact with others. Maintain physical distance between yourself and delivery service providers during exchanges and wear a mask. It is possible to stay socially connected with friends and family who don't live in your home by calling, using video chat, or staying connected through social media. If meeting others in person, like at a small outdoor gathering, yard or a driveway gathering with a small group of friends or family members, stay at least six feet away from others who are not from your household. It's safest to avoid crowded places and gatherings where it may be difficult to stay at least six feet away from others who are not from your household. If you are in a crowded space, try to keep six feet of space between yourself and others at all times and wear a mask. Masks are especially important in times when physical distancing is difficult. 
Pay attention to any physical guides, such as tape markings on floors or signs on walls, directing attendees to remain at least six feet apart from others in lines or at other times. Allow other people six feet of space when you pass by them in both indoor and outdoor settings. Consider going for a walk, bike ride, or wheelchair roll in your neighborhood or in another safe location where you can maintain at least six feet of distance between yourself and other pedestrians and cyclists. If you decide to visit a nearby park, trail, or recreational facility, consider how many other people might be there and, con and choose a location where it might be possible to keep at least six feet of space between yourself and other people who are not from your household. Face coverings are an additional step to help slow the spread of COVID-19 when combined with everyday preventative actions and physical distancing in public settings. Why wear them? They are recommended as a simple barrier to help prevent respiratory droplets from traveling into the air and onto other people when the mask wearer coughs, sneezes, talks, or raises their voice. This recommendation is based on what we know about the role respiratory droplets play in the spread of COVID-19 virus, paired with emerging evidence from clinical studies that shows face coverings reduce the spray of droplets when worn over the nose and mouth. When not to wear a face covering. While engaged in activities that may cause the mask to become wet, like swimming, a wet mask may make it difficult to breathe. If you're engaged in high intensity activities like running, you may not be able to wear a mask if it becomes, if it causes difficulty breathing. If you work in a setting where masks may increase the risk of heat related illness or safety concerns due to introducing a hazard such as straps getting caught in machinery, you may consult with an occupational safety and health professional to determine the appropriate mask for their setting. Outdoor workers may prioritize use of masks when in close contact with other people, like during group travel, and remove masks when physical distancing. Who should wear them? All people two years of age and older should wear a mask in public settings and when around people who don't live in your household, especially when physical distancing measures are difficult to maintain. Exceptions include people who are deaf and hard of hearing or those who care for or interact with the person who is hearing impaired and may be unable to wear masks if they rely on lip reading to communicate. Living with intellectual and developmental disabilities, mental health conditions or other sensory sensitivities and may have challenges wearing a mask. Younger children, preschool or elementary school age. Who should not wear a face covering? Children younger than two years old, anyone who has trouble breathing, plastic face shields for newborns and infants are not recommended. Did you know there is a right way and a wrong way to use a face mask? How do I put on a face mask? Wash your hands with soap and water or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer to avoid contaminating your mask. Hold your mask by the ear loops or strings. Then place a loop around each ear or tie the strings behind your head. Expand your mask to cover both your nose and mouth. Secure it under your chin. Pinch the bendable piece at the bridge of your nose if there is one to secure it. Make sure your mask fits snugly against the sides of your face. How do I take off a face mask? Untie the strings behind your head or grab the ear loops. Avoid touching the front of your mask. Pull forward and away from your face. Be careful not to touch your face. Wash your hands with soap and water or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Tips for wearing a mask. The outer part of the mask gets contaminated. If you touch it, wash your hands or use alcohol-based hand sanitizer immediately. Avoid placing a used mask on a bare surface or counter. Place the mask on a napkin or inside a paper bag. You don't need to change a mask every day unless it becomes wet or damaged. If that happens, throw it away and use a new mask. 
Preferred PPE include N95 or higher respirator, face shield with goggles, one pair of clean non-sterile gloves, and an isolation gown. Acceptable alternative PPE includes a face mask. Now I'd like to play a short video of how to safely put on and remove personal protective equipment. How to safely put on personal protective equipment or more commonly called PPE. We will demonstrate one way to appropriately put on or don PPE. More than one donning method may be acceptable to your facility. It's important that you receive training, demonstrate competency, and practice your healthcare facilities donning procedure. First, identify and gather the proper PPE to don, including an appropriately fitted isolation gown, a NIOSH approved N95 filtering face piece respirator or higher level respiratory protection, or if a respirator is not available, a face mask, a face shield or goggles, and a pair of disposable patient examination gloves. Perform hand hygiene by using alcohol-based hand sanitizer or washing your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Put on the isolation gown. Tie all ties or snap all snaps. You may need assistance from another healthcare provider. Put on the N95 respirator. When using a respirator with a nose piece, fit it to your nose using both hands. Do not bend or tent the respirator. Extend the respirator under your chin, protecting both your mouth and nose. Pull the top strap over your head, placing it on the crown. Then pull the bottom strap over your head, placing it at the base of your neck. Lastly, perform a user seal check. Do this by using your hands to cover the surface of the respirator and gently exhale, checking that the face piece bulges slightly. Then, while keeping your hands over the respirator, take in a quick, deep breath, checking that the face piece collapses slightly. If air escapes through the edges, readjust the fit of your respirator and perform another user seal check. Do this each time you put the respirator on. If a respirator is not available, put on a face mask. Extend the face mask under your chin, protecting both your mouth and nose. If the mask has loops, hook them around your ears. If it has ties, secure them at the base of your neck and crown of your head. Next, put on a face shield or goggles. Lastly, put on your gloves. Pull the gloves down so that they cover the wrist of the gown. You are now ready to enter the patient's room. Continuing with our presentation, next we'll discuss how to keep your hands clean. Washing your hands is one of the best ways to prevent spreading germs. Washing your hands with soap and water is the best way to remove germs, but you can also use hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol. 
Glove wearing is not a substitute for hand hygiene. Wear gloves according to standard precautions when it can be reasonably anticipated that contact with blood or other potentially infectious materials, non-intact skin, potentially contaminated skin, or contaminated equipment could occur. Wear your right size. Anything can get under the glove and contaminate your hands if you wear the wrong size. Wash your hands before putting on the gloves and after removing them. Change gloves and perform hand hygiene if gloves become damaged or visibly soiled. You can clean gloves with hand sanitizer. Please visit the following links for the most up-to-date New York State and New York City reopening guidance and to locate COVID-19 hotspots throughout the five boroughs. And that concludes the presentation. Now we'll take a few questions from the audience regarding New York City and New York State COVID-19 guidelines. Do you have to wear face coverings over your mouth and nose? Yes. As I mentioned during the presentation, spread happens when an infected person coughs, sneezes, or talks, and droplets from their mouth or nose are launched into the air and land in the mouth or nose of people nearby. Their droplets can also be inhaled into your lungs through your mouth and nose, so it's important to cover both with your face covering. This recommendation is based on what we know about the role respiratory droplets play in the spread of COVID-19 virus, paired with emerging evidence from clinical studies that shows face coverings reduce the spray of droplets when worn over the mouth and nose. When should I replace my face covering? A disposable mask is only designed to be used once. You should use this kind of mask once before throwing it away and should also dispose of it if it becomes damp. Your face covering should be washed at least once a day, depending on how often you wear it. If you're just wearing it occasionally, a weekly wash should be appropriate as long as it's not visibly soiled. If it is soiled or if you've been around someone with a confirmed or suspected COVID-19 diagnosis, the face covering should be washed immediately after use. Wash fabric masks in soap or detergent and preferably hot water and dry completely. Where should I store my face covering when I take it off? You should store it in a clean plastic bag. Do not store your mask around your arm or wrist uh, or pull it down to rest around your chin or neck. Can masks be washed and disinfected or are they single use? Um, so referencing back to the uh, previous question, Certain fabric masks can be washed and disinfected if washed in soap and detergent and preferably hot water and dried completely. Um, but certain disposable masks, um, like surgical masks, they are meant to be single use. So it's good to know the difference between which kind of mask you own. What's the difference between surgical masks and a N95? Surgical masks are made of three layers of synthetic non-woven materials and are configured to have filtration layers sandwiched in the middle. Respirators, on the other hand, are designed to protect healthcare workers who provide care to COVID-19 patients in settings where aerosol generating procedures are undertaken. Is there a website that has testing locations? Absolutely. Um, you can check out the um, health and hospitals website for testing locations.
Great. Well, it doesn't look like there are any more questions in the chat. This video concludes our test, trace, and take care video series. So I thank you for tuning in and helping share accurate messaging about New York City's test and trace efforts. You can continue to download and share our test and trace two-pager available in Arabic, Bengali, Creole, Mandarin, Spanish, and Russian. And to stay involved with the New York Immigration Coalition, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and text NYIC to 52 886 to stay up to date with our actions and campaigns. Stay safe and enjoy your evening.